two-thirds an opportunity and something she's very well connected in Russia. Let me introduce her to some people in our, in our foreign policy think tank establishment, and would that be okay? Uh, One-third, you know, like she wanted to talk about John Stuart Mill and, and Erasmus and the Greeks. I mean, she's a real intellectual. But I had this, this concern about the, the risk that there was some, some mischief afoot, and she was here doing what, well, as those first six months wore on, that, that risk profile shifted, and she stopped talking so much about John Stuart Mill and John Rawls and Milton Friedman, and she started talking about all these Republican bigwigs she's swanking around with. I could have told you, I'm looking for a, a prop, I could have told you in December of 2015, I was forming this thought, it's starting to seem what they're doing, mm -hmm. is now that they know she's here just swimming around with the Republicans, it's starting to seem that what they're doing is letting this can-o scandal mm -hmm. develop on the Republicans, and someday they're going to pick it up and shake it, mm -hmm. crack it, and spray it on the Republicans. <laughs> nah, no way. No way would James Comey, no way would President Obama ever do something like that. Uh, that's literally what, uh, and I'm not saying President Obama was involved. Don't make any assumptions about who X, Y, and Z are. Those are all up to the DOJ involved. I'm ho I, uh, but I literally, ha I could have told you in December 2015, which I will note is seven months before the s official start of the investigation, right. that I had already picked up. I was already hypothesizing this is starting to seem like they're just deliberately letting this grenade develop on the Republicans, are they just going to pull the pin on it someday? I hear you. I could, you know. It, 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 was there anything that you witnessed that, you know, or were you ever told to, to stand down, you know, to, to, to back off? Is, is that what you were referring to a little while ago, or was that something different? No, in, uh, in March of 2016, I was, uh, she asked me over to Russia to give a speech. Her goal was to get me to Moscow to give a talk at the Central Bank on Bitcoin and liberalism, and then to take me to a resort in the Altai Mountains that was going to be shut down for three days so that 40 to 45 people would get together from the oligarchs and the governments and, we're, and their liberals, and we're going to spend three days talking about liberalism and also, anyway, this, is, this was the offer, and they, she had been sent by them to get me to come back and do this. Yeah. When she asked me in March to come over again, she was saying, speak in St. Petersburg, on blockchain, and I think that we can change the world and eliminate poverty and stuff with blockchain. Come speak. Putin is going to be there. It's been arranged. You're going to have 60 minutes alone with Putin, and this will be great. At that point, I was told, break up with her and, they, and get her out of your life, and I worked on something else involving corruption of a federal official. Okay. When that, what, okay. No, go ahead. When that? Sorry. When that matter involving the, the corruption of a federal official was complete, it ended in an odd way that sounded fishy. It ended in an odd way that was very fishy. And again, the details are all in the Department of Justice. And this, uh, but it was involved in a corruption of a federal official, and it ended in a way that smelled like skunk. At which point, when they came back around July 1st mm -hmm. of 2016, which is to say a few weeks before the Republican convention, right. but about, ta about the time that Trump became the Nominee. Presumptive, not, presumptive nominee, yeah. not nominee. But uh, they came back and said, boy, did we make a mistake. Russia, 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 Russia. We, we need to do it. And I want to be clear, they said this. They said the United States never, ever asked this to somebody. Never asked a citizen to conduct a romantic relationship in order to get information. This is such a national security emergency. We need to ask you to do this if you're willing. And the orders come from X, Y, and Z. We want to be clear, Patrick. You are absolutely in your rights to refuse this. You have no obligation to. We never, in all our careers, we've never heard of an American citizen being asked to sleep with someone in order to get information and such. I want to be clear about something. And so then I conducted for the following seven months, I, to all intents and purposes, conducted another romance. That entire time I was lying to the federal government. I put on a show. I was flying her, wanting and dining her. That second time I spent time with her, I created the impression deliberately that I was complying with the request and being romantic. What I was actually doing, and she has confirmed this, I understand, from a prison cell. She has no, you know, she could have every right to hate me. I understand she's confirmed a journalist. I was a total gentleman. 
anyone observing and surveilling would have thought that we were deeply in love. I never laid a finger on her because I knew it would disgrace our country and it would disgrace Maria. And that entire period that I was being instructed to romance her, I created the impression, and I, but it was all a lie. And I did that, and at the same time, I set up X, Y, and Z for some felony charges. Okay. I, I just have two, two quick questions for you. Um, one is, what made you realize last summer that the person who was contacting you was Peter Strzok? Well, he wasn't contacting. Let me be clear. Some, okay. some people showed up and said these instructions come and this request comes. Uh, it was things, because I had been involved, I deliberately kept, once this Russia scandal started, believe it or not, I, didn't I tried as much as I could not to follow it because I wanted to keep my own mind clear for when the investigators show it up. And we should talk about that, too. But when the investigators showed up, so my mind would be clear. So I really tried not to follow it as hard as I could. By last May or June, I mean, it became impossible, and I felt very aw awful because I knew I had these very important pieces. I actually went to see a lawyer, and the lawyer, who's a big Republican lawyer, I went to, he was all excited. I'm going to take, you know, I said, I need to come forward to somebody, help me. And he heard about five minutes of my story, and he said, Patrick, you're going to go home and you're going to keep your mouth shut. You're going to go to the prison for the rest of your life if you come forward. Uh, but the next month, it was, watching, it was watching the congressional hearing ripping these guys apart. Mm -hmm. That the repeat, There were little details that were said that made me realize, holy cow, this guy Peter Strzok is the guy who sent these instructions. And his little details within the things that were said. And they have since confirmed to me more recently, yes, you're correct in what you okay. figured out. All right. Um, last question. What do you say to folks who watch this and they say, you know, he's, he's spinning a yarn? Uh, yeah. Uh, listen, I've put everything on the line. I was warned that I'm going to be destroyed by this, that all of Washington is going to try to grind me into dust. I had to eject from the company. I had to eject. I can't bring that on the company. If you want to help me, and you, uh, anyway, you go buy your daughter a pillow at Overstock.com. The entirety of Washington is going to come down on me and try to destroy me. So I had to get out of the way. That's what's happened. And well, no doubt Peter, Pe Peter Strzok would watch this and say, you know, he, he's full no, of it. I, I had nothing to do with yeah, anything that he's talking I can't about, wait. I would imagine. He's, I can't, he won't. I can tell you, Peter Strzok, you want to see a, a former director crap his pants? Pardon me. Go stick a, a, a uh, television camera on Peter Strzok. Or let's just say James Comey and say the name Patrick Byrne. You will see a former director of the okay. FBI craft his pants. All right. Well, we, um, we thank you for coming here tonight and telling your story. And we'll obviously follow it um, as, as it moves forward. Shop. And um, thank, thank you very much. Shop overstock. Thank you. Thank you very much. Patrick Byrne joining us tonight. Good to see you, sir. There's more serious XM to enjoy.